welcome to the Natural Super Kids podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. It's lovely to have you here today as we continue our discussion and tips and strategies for getting your kids to eat more healthy, varied diet and addressing um, fussy eating and some of the things that you can do to get more variety into your fussy eaters. So last week I talked about the division of responsibility, which is really important to understand as a concept to take the pressure off us as parents and to put some control back in our kids' hand when it co- hands when it comes to what they are eating and how much they are eating. So if you missed that episode, be sure to go back and have a listen to that, even if it's after this episode, um, because that's really the, the most important thing to get your head around when it comes to feeding fussy kids. But today we're going to be talking about another strategy that I like to suggest um, when it comes to fussy kids or kids that won't eat the amount of variety that we would like them to. And it is adding nutrition into the food that they are eating. Now, this can be tricky. So I'm going to be sharing some really practical strategies of of ways of how this can look um, in terms of, of getting more nutrition into the food that your kids are eating. But, you know, feeding picky eaters is one of the most challenging things that parents can face. When we know how important nutrition is, it becomes even more frustrating when they won't just won't eat the food that we're putting in front of them. Um, and it can make mealtimes a nightmare. And it can also raise concerns about whether your child is getting the nutrients that they need for proper growth and development. Kids have a higher demand for nutrients compared to adults because of all the growth and development that's going on with them. And when it comes to fussy eaters, generally they prefer the bland, refined carbohydrate processed foods, which tend to be low in nutrients. So then kids can quickly become deficient in these essential nutrients. And this is like a perpetuating cycle because certain nutrient deficiencies can make fussy eating even worse. So one of the things we really want to focus on when it comes to fussy eaters is getting creative on ways that we can get more nutrition into their diets. It's not always easy, but it's definitely worth some some creativity and some thought on our part as parents. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today, adding more nutrition into your fussy eater's diet and ways that you can do that in a practical sense. So the very first step in this sort of strategy or process is to be working with the foods and the dishes and the meals that your kids already like. So start with the things that they already like. And so sometimes we might be able to add nutrition into that particular dish that the child likes, or um, you know, sometimes we might be able to serve some more variety on the side and over time um, they will hopefully learn to accept that. And that time frame is really different for every child. The important thing is we need to celebrate the small victories, the small wins, because this we do need to be patient with this process and with fussy eaters in general. And that's why there's so much frustration when it comes to parents, because it can be painfully slow. So as with any process that we are that we are making changes to we want to be celebrating those small victories that we have because that'll give us the motivation to keep going so even if you're just adding a tiny sprinkle of something nutritious into your kids food over that particular day count that as a win and celebrate and move forward from there so when it comes to fussy eaters vegetables are commonly rejected. So we're going to be talking about how to get more veggies into our kids today. Um, And sometimes um, 
kids will also have issues with protein and um, and meat and that sort of thing, which is highly nutritious when it comes to our kids. You know, meat and animal protein does contain a lot of protein, zinc, iron, B12, iodine, if we're talking about seafood. And so kids that don't eat these animal proteins can be missing out on a lot of this valuable nutrition. Um, So let's go into some of my favorite go-to strategies for feeding picky eaters to get more nutrition into them. Starting off with breakfast. So at breakfast time, fussy kids and kids in general are not getting enough nutrition. And so we want to be thinking about ways that we can add some extra nutrition into the foods that they're already eating. So let's look at some typical breakfast foods that kids are commonly eating. Cereals, toasts, um, and often these will have very little nutrition depending on the the you know particular ones that we're we're choosing. But most boxed breakfast cereal doesn't have a lot of nutrition and has a lot of sort of extra nasties in there, sugars and additives and flavors and colors and synthetic nutrients um, sort of added to the cereal. But we don't want to make a huge change and get rid of the box cereal altogether um, and go to a more whole food based cereal. We want to make the changes slowly. So here are some ideas. Start with your child's breakfast cereal that they're already eating, but grind up some nuts and seeds such as almonds, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, and sprinkle just a tiny amount. Start with half a teaspoon or even less over the cereal that they're already eating. This adds protein, it adds minerals, it adds healthy fats. Even if it's just a tiny amount, um, we are adding that nutrition. If your child doesn't complain about that little sprinkle over their breakfast, the next day you add a little bit more and then you add a little bit more. So you're gradually getting them used to different tastes, different textures, but in a very um, slow way, a step-by-step way, which is really important. Maybe you could make some homemade granola using nuts and seeds and whole grains such as oats or rye flakes or quinoa um, and add just a little bit of that homemade granola to their current cereal of choice. So you're not switching them over to a homemade granola as a first step. You're adding a little bit of that granola onto the cereal that they already are eating. And at first it might seem a bit pointless. Well, what's a teaspoon of this granola going to actually do to their nutrient levels? But we've got to be thinking about the long-term game. And so with fussy kids and kids in general, they don't like change. So we need to make these change changes slowly. Another thing that we could do is add some sliced fresh fruit onto their cereal, whether that might be kiwi fruit or some berries uh, to add some extra antioxidants and nutrients, um, or maybe they prefer that fruit on the side. Um, So, you know, you've got to, you've got to go with what your child's preferences are um, and really, you know, get creative um, on ways that you can add nutrition. Some kids don't like things mixed together and other kids will happily eat cereal with blueberries on top. So it really is, is dependent on your child's preferences. Maybe you could look at the milk that you're using and add a more nutritious milk, whether that is um, going for, you know, an A2 based dairy milk, um, which is less inflammatory if you feel like your kids are having some issues with dairy. I've done a, a podcast episode in the past on dairy. So if you're interested in learning more about that topic, you can um, listen to that episode. Uh, and the other, you know, you might want to mix up the milk that you're using. You might want to start using some coconut milk or some almond milk to gradually start to decrease the amount of dairy that they're having. So then you could not completely switch the milk out altogether, but you could add just a little bit of almond milk or coconut milk into the milk that they're already having and slowly kind of change that over as they get used to the different taste and texture. When it comes to toast, we could change the type of bread that we're serving up at breakfast time. So we might slowly move to a more whole grain version of their current bread of choice. Even if it is a crappy supermarket bread, you know, we've got to be 
taking those steps in the right direction. Eventually, you might be able to choose a sourdough or a spelt or a rye bread. Um, and, And so we can make the changes slowly in that way. We can look at changing the topping um, of the toast that they're having. So we might be able to put a a very small smear of avocado under their Vegemite if that's their preference and see if they notice. We might be able to mix in a bit of nut butter, such as an almond butter or a macadamia butter, in with the peanut butter that they're having to change the nutrient profile of the foods that they're having. A big issue with fussy eaters is they tend to eat the same foods over and over. So they're not getting the variety of nutrients. So if we can get a bit of almond butter into them, as opposed to peanut butter, um, then we can change that nutrient profile slightly and start to get more nutrients um, into them. So nut butters are a good nutrient-dense option for toast. We might be able to um, you know, add some, some cheese and tomato onto their toast as opposed to just a jam. So we're getting a bit more protein and, um, and some, some goodness through a tomato um, on, on their um, bread in the morning. We might even be able to add a sprinkle over the top, such as ground up nuts or seeds, or even like a seaweed sprinkle. So something like a wakame flake, um, especially if they're, they're having Vegemite and they've, or it's already got that saltiness in there. Um, dried seaweed, sprinkle, seaweed sprinkles can be a great source of, of minerals and iodine. Um, so that can be, you know, a really, a really sort of small step and often unnoticed that we can add some extra nutrition into the toast that they're eating in the morning. Pancakes are another really good example of ways that we can add in some extra nutrition. So we might switch out a regular wheat flour for a wholemeal wheat flour, or we might add in some buckwheat or spelt flour um, into the pancake mix. Again, not replacing all of the flour completely, but maybe half, half, or even a quarter of the healthier flour in with the white flour. We might add some chia seeds into the batter or some flax seeds or some other ground up nuts and seeds to boost the fiber and healthy fat and protein content of that batter. We could get creative and make things like monster pancakes by adding a spinach puree to the batter. When kids are uh, really excited about monsters or um, any anything else green that you can get creative on, you know, we can get some greens into them this way. We can add some extra um, nutritious toppings to the pancake. So we could add some mashed banana or some berries either in the batter or as a topping. So we, we can think about making these, these slight switches to every meal that they have and gradually increase that nutrition um, at breakfast. So let's have a look at some examples of, of main meals um, and some things that I've had some really good success with with clients over the years. So pasta is often a fussy kid's favorite meal. Now, some kids, if they're, you know, really picky, they just want plain pasta. That can be a bit trickier. But if they have a pasta sauce, you know, you can easily add a whole heap of vegetables. Again, starting small, you might want to grate or finely chop vegetables to the pasta sauce, even if it's just some extra onions and celery, um, things like carrot, zucchini, cauliflower, broccoli, spinach, uh, fresh tomatoes. So think about what veggies you can add to the pasta sauce, your your kid's favorite pasta sauce. Um, Again, starting with the things that they are already enjoying and already eating. Um, If your child can spot a veggie a mile away, like a lot of fussy kids can, you can puree more neutral vegetables such as zucchini or cauliflower. Um, With zucchini, you can even peel the dark green off so it's less noticeable. Uh, You know, there's a real variation in how kids detect these veggies in. So you've got to, again, like go with, go with your child's preference. Another thing we can do with pasta is switch out the the beef mints that we might be using, something like kangaroo mints, which has um, which is extra high in zinc and iron, which are often lacking in kids that are fussy, um, can work really well in a pasta. Again, we might not want to switch out all of the beef um, for kangaroo, but we might just switch out a little bit. And of course, this is if you're in Australia, if you're elsewhere in the world, you might think, oh my gosh, that's so strange to eat kangaroo. 
kangaroo, but it's a very healthy meat and very environmentally friendly as well. Kangaroos here aren't farmed, so we don't have issues with them being given antibiotics or give or being fed grains. We know they've been um, feeding on grass and natural and living a natural life. So um, kangaroo can be a really great option and is extra nutritious uh, when it comes to red meat. Another thing we can do um, in pasta sauces is add some grated liver. Now, this I know grosses out a lot of mums. Liver is a powerhouse of nutrients. It's got so much in in there in terms of nutrient concentration. Um, We're getting lots of iron and other minerals. uh, And often if we're just grating a little bit of liver into a meaty pasta sauce, you really cannot notice it. Um, And if we can start young with this, with young kids, it can be really great. So if you buy some good quality organic livers, um, it's fairly fairly inexpensive liver is. Um, One thing that you can do to overcome the distinct flavor of liver is soak it in milk. or you can soak soak it in water with a couple of tablespoons of vinegar and then you just freeze it as a whole liver and then you can just grate it while it's frozen straight into um, while you're cooking up the meat, the pasta sauce. So that is great for anyone that's lacking iron. So not just fussy eaters, but kids that are low in iron or women that are low in iron. Uh, Liver makes a really great... um, great food choice to add into your diet. And we can um, add some more nutritious liquids into a pasta sauce or anything saucy for that matter. So we can add in some bone broth as a base for our sauce. Uh, We can do this with casseroles and things as well. And we might want to vary our our kids' sort of taste by adding in some herbs into, into pasta sauces as well. So things like parsley and basil and oregano, extra garlic for that immune boosting property. Um, can be really great. So we can do a lot with pasta. Um, And I'm talking about that sort of more traditional bolognese sauce. Um, One of the other things that I've had really good success getting into my kids with pasta is sardines, which are, again, a powerhouse of nutrients. Um, And my kids don't like sardines on their own, but if they're mixed through a pasta sauce with some veggies and some tomato paste and a little dash of cream, they they go for it. They, they really like it. So um, we've got to get creative sometimes as parents to get this extra nutrition in. A lot of fussy kids really like Mexican food, nachos and tacos and things like that. So, you know, starting with what you would normally make in terms of the, the main mix for the nachos, whether it's a meaty or a beanie sort of sauce, we can add in some extra beans into the meat sauce. We can add in some grated veggies, whether it's zucchini or carrot, um, put some guacamole on the top so they're getting those healthy fats from the avocado. Um, Again, we could use a more nutritious meat choice like kangaroo or venison is another good choice um, and and mix it up that way. So by doing this, not only are we adding extra nutrition into our kids' diet, but we're getting our kids used to different textures, different flavors um, in a a slow step-by-step way, which is really helpful when it comes to, to fussy eaters. Pizza, my daughter's favorite. Anytime she gets to choose what we eat, she chooses pizza. And making your own pizza at home can be great. Add vegetables to the top of your pizza. When we're, when we're, we've got a food that our kids love, it's surprising what they will eat on the top of it. So, for example, you know, I've put things like, again, sardines, kale, beetroot onto um, pizza. These are the sorts of things my kids don't generally like, but when it's on pizza they will eat it. <laughs> it's like the, the, you know, the thought of the pizza is so exciting that they forget what's on top of it. Making a pesto for, for pizza, and this is a good one for pasta as well, making your own pesto packed with things like um, basil, of course, but you can put parsley and kale um, in there as well. And kids will often eat veggies in this way, made up in a, in a pesto, and you can use it as a pizza sauce or to stir through pasta. 
if your child is particularly fussy and you're thinking, yeah, right, my my child wouldn't even eat anything green on top of a, a pizza, um, you can make a plain cheese pizza, but then blend up some cauliflower and mix it through the tomato sauce to get that extra veggie content in. Cauliflower is a good, really good one um, because it's it doesn't have much of a taste. It doesn't have, obviously, it's white, so it can easily get hidden in um, in dishes as well. And just to be clear, I love getting creative on different ways that we can get veggies into our kids, but it's also really important um, that we are being very kind of obvious by um, serving our kids veggies uh, like as they are on the plate as well. So they get they get used to veggies through that exposure. So it's not all about hiding the veggies, but I think when it comes to fussy eaters and we have this perpetuating problem of nutrient deficiencies causing kids to become more fussy, we really need to figure out a way to get more of these nutrients in. Um, and so that that's where this kind of strategy of hiding veggies in food can be really helpful. Snack time. Now, kids are generally quite motivated at snack time, motivated to eat. So make sure you're adding veggies into kids' snacks, whether that's, you know, veggie sticks on a, on a plate with some, some dip and some other foods. Um, you know, some kids will eat that, some kids won't. But snack time, particularly after school or after kindy when they're coming back home after being out for the day, they're generally quite motivated to eat. So you can be, you can really be surprised at the sorts of things they will eat if you, if you serve them up then rather than waiting until dinner time. Um, Smoothies are a great option for snacks and we can sort of get some extra protein into smoothies, particularly if your child doesn't eat a lot of um, protein, fish, chicken, meat, eggs. Uh, protein's really important for kids. So if they're not big protein eaters, you could put in some pro- like a good quality protein powder into a smoothie. Um, I really like 180 Nutrition um, protein powders are among my favorite. I'll pop a link in the show notes to those um, so you can check them out. Add veggies to smoothies as well. Again, cauliflower is a great one here. Zucchini, avocado, cucumber, um, a little bit of baby spinach, particularly if you add it to chocolate smoothies, um, you don't necessarily see the green colour. But if your kids are young and you can call it a monster smoothie or a Hulk smoothie or um, something green that they're into, that can work really well as well. As Sometimes you just need to put a bit of extra sweetness into the green smoothie. So you might want to add a medjool date or a little bit of honey or maple syrup so it doesn't taste too green, but they're still getting that goodness in. You can try some alternative milks in your smoothies. Again, to get um, kids used to varied taste, things like coconut milk, really high in those healthy fats or adding a little bit of um, fermented foods into smoothies such as coconut kefir or milk kefir can work really well. And that really helps to, to start to build up a nice healthy microbiome, which is very important when it comes to fussy eaters as well. When it comes to chocolate smoothies, and look, your kids might not even eat smoothies, drink smoothies. They might only like a chocolate milkshake. So you need to start there. And maybe you could add in some cacao, which is an excellent source of minerals into whatever else you normally use to make the chocolate milkshake um, for your child. So um, yeah, cacao is a good source of minerals that you can add easily to a chocolate milkshake. Um, and, you know, there's all sorts of smoothie superfood powders that you can add to smoothies as well. Uh, so you can start small and, you know, add either like a beetroot um, based smoothie powder or a more green smoothie powder to add a bit of extra nutrition. When it comes to other snacks, I really love adding in veggies into baked goods that we make. So whether it's muffins or cakes or brownies or bliss balls, we can maybe add some beetroot or some zucchini or some cauliflower. If you're a club member, we have some really great recipes such as cheeky cauliflower cupcakes and um, beetroot chocolate cake uh, that your kids will not even notice that the veggies are in there. So that can be a really good option for adding more veggies into those veggie adverse kids um, into their baked goods. Now, 
Um, so a lot of a lot of fussy kids have have some sensory issues, and they prefer crunchy food. So you can try dehydrating slices of vegetables and make veggie chips um, to get some extra veggies into them. So think about the texture of the food that you're serving as well. You know, I talk about dips, but some kids don't like that kind of soft, soggy food. They prefer crunchy food. Um, so we need to sort of get creative as how as to how we can get some crunch into these healthy foods and, and making your own veggie chips. You can even do it in the oven um, can be a really good option. Again, if you're a club member, we've got a cooking demo um, and a recipe in the club site uh, that you can have a look at. And if you're not a club member, um, I'm talking about the Natural Super Kids Club, which is our online membership hub. Um, if you're not a club member, you can get on the wait list by clicking over to the show notes and we'll let you know when we are open again because we have so many great resources in there for fussy eaters and lots of recipe options um, to try with your fussy eaters as well. And don't always think of snacks as sweet. You know, we don't have to go for the cakes and the muffins and the fruit, um, all of those sweet foods. Try and get some savoury options um, in to your kids when it comes to snack time as well. That might be boiled eggs or slices of cheese or some nuts um, that we can kind of add in some flavours too. My daughter and I have been making some uh, dry roasted nuts with cinnamon um, and other spices on them, which they're loving. So when it comes to snack time, she's much more likely to grab a handful of those than she would just plain almonds as an example. So sometimes, you know, adding in um, some extra flavour and adding in some crunch by dry roasting can be a really great option when it comes to nuts as well. So I hope that that's given you some really practical ideas on ways that you can get more nutrition into your kids. As I said, it's not all about hiding the nutrition, but we really want to break that cycle of um, you know, nutrient deficiencies leading to more fussy eating. And sometimes supplements can be helpful here as well. So getting your kids onto a good multivitamin um, that covers all of the, the basics when it comes to nutrient intake um, can be a really good option too. I'll link an article that I've got in the show notes about choosing a good multivitamin for your kids as well. We'll be continuing this topic of fussy eating next week. Um, so I hope to see you then. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.